welcome to Seattle Community Church Online. We are so glad that you are joining us this morning to worship God wherever you are. Today is Palm Sunday, the very first week of Holy Week, the week that leads us to Jesus, the cross, and the resurrection. We know that it's a little disorienting. This is not our normal way that we celebrate Holy Week, but we want to invite you to do so as a family. On our website, you will find a packet of things to help you and your family walk with Jesus from the cross to the grave and to resurrection. We're also going to gather as a family on Good Friday at 7 p.m. We will have a service available. We want to encourage you to join us for that uh, online, of course, but we will still have it. And then on Easter Sunday, we are going to celebrate, celebrate the resurrection of Jesus. And so we want to invite you today, this week, to get ready for that by making sure that you have communion elements in your home. Some bread, some juice, maybe even a little bit of wine, so that we can celebrate Jesus' amazing gift for each and every one of us together on Easter Sunday. Friends, if you are still feeling a little lonely, a little disoriented, and like you're missing seeing your people from SEC, I want to encourage you and invite you to join one of our three Bible studies. These have been a great experience for us to see people and share about what's going on in our lives <coughs> and what God is doing in the world. <clears throat> Those are Sunday night, Tuesday morning, and Thursday evening for parents. So please sign up online and join us for those. And finally, if you are part of our OM2, our missions committee, and you wanna be a part of their meeting, which is happening today, this Sunday at 1245, we invite you to send me an email or to send ministry at seattlechurch.org an email. We'll get you the Zoom link so you can be a part of that meeting. Friends, it is Palm Sunday. We get to worship God, welcome him into our homes and into our hearts and into our city because we know that our King is ever present with us and is riding forward to save us. Let's prepare our hearts for God. Thank you. 
pray with me. We praise you, O God, for your redemption of the world through Jesus Christ. He entered the holy city of Jerusalem in triumph and was proclaimed Messiah and King by those who spread garments and branches along his way. Just as we carry these branches, may we follow Christ in the way of the cross, that dying and rising with him, we may enter into your kingdom. God, whose gracious love for us embraced that long and lonely journey to the cross, gather us close to you in these days, when again we make that journey in meditation and recollection. Help us to contemplate again the way taken by our Savior, the false charges against him, the fear and flight of the disciples, the kiss of betrayal, the crown of thorns, the purple robe. And in such contemplation, Give us courage to face those times in our own lives when he received the same at our hands. Yet help us also remember that you have gone before us. So we look to you for compassion and forgiveness, knowing that you are able to save. When we were weak, make us strong. When we hurt and are resentful, make us forgiving. When defeated and discouraged, make us hopeful. Keep us from asking for mercy without giving it ourselves, from praying for your kingdom, but never working for it. In this week, deepen our faith by your matchless grace. Deepen the measure of our gratitude and Christian obedience. Move us who have so much to share with others who have so little. Uphold us when we summon your, our courage to speak out for the alien and stranger within our gates and for those who long deny dignity and freedom. Gower, guard and guide us through these days of meditation and remembrance. Guard and guide us through all our days until we come at last to that day when all our days and journeys will be gathered into your eternity. And we shall be with you forever. Glory be to you, O God. Amen. Hi, everybody. I pray and hope that everybody is doing well. I've recently come back from my sabbatical and I am so happy to be worshiping with you again, although we are not worshiping in person. And uh, believe it or not, I've really missed our church community and I've been itching to come back. And although I don't get to see all of you face to face, I'm so glad that I get to share the message with you today. Uh, today, we are celebrating Palm Sunday. And for those of you who are not familiar with Palm Sunday, it's the day that Jesus entered into Jerusalem in his final days and on his way to the cross. And today, the passage that I wanna share with you comes from the Gospel of Matthew. Listen for the word of the Lord. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, The Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king is coming to you humble and mounted on a donkey and on a colt, the fowl of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloak on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna! to the son of David, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest heaven. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, who is this? The crowds were saying, this is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. 
The Word of the Lord. I love today's passage. This story reminds us of the true character of Jesus, and it re reveals the important decision that everyone must make in their lives, especially those of us who call ourselves followers of Jesus. When we look at today's story, Jesus goes into Jerusalem riding on a donkey. And this may not seem very important, but it's significant because donkeys were ridden by officials during civil, peaceful processions. And for Jesus to go into Jerusalem riding on a donkey, it's a declaration that he is coming in peace and also bringing peace to Jerusalem. Whether it's because Jesus or there's just a lot going on in Jerusalem, uh, everybody is in turmoil. Maybe it's because they're just getting ready for the Passover, but they're busy running around. The city's packed with people. And I can just imagine people bumping into each other, uh, getting a little bit annoyed by the crowd, a little shoving and pushing going on maybe. It's a headache to be in that city, maybe kind of like ours today. In the Bible, when it talks about turmoil, it's usually talking about earth or a storm or earthquake or some violent shaking that's going on. But here, when it talks about a city of people being in turmoil, we know that there is an inner struggle going on with the city and with the people of the city. And now that they are being called to make a decision. And in the case of this story and for all of us, the inner struggle is about how we will respond to Jesus. When we look at our world today, it, I, I think it looks a lot like Jerusalem in turmoil. A lot of us are experiencing craziness in our life, a turmoil. Uh, and I would say that it's not just because of the coronavirus, but because the situation is causing us to decide how we are going to respond. Whether we're going to respond as followers of Jesus or whether we're going to respond just like the rest of the world. A little while ago, my nephew in California sent me this photo of the craziness that was happening down there at a Costco. As you can see, uh, it's a group of people at Costco climbing up the storage shelves and taking down rice for themselves. People, we can do better. I'm sure you've seen these other images at Costco or at your supermarket. Don't freak out like the rest of the world. Remember who you are. When the rush to stock up on supplies all started, my wife and daughter uh, were on a trip. And as soon as they left for the trip, I thought to myself, I gotta go to Costco. And when I got to Costco, uh, I was headed in and I ran into somebody from church who was coming out of Costco with uh, some stuff. And he said to me, Hey, you know, so after we said some highs, he goes, hey, getting some supplies, huh? Got to stock up. And at that point, actually, I didn't know how to respond. So I just kind of said, uh, yeah, oh, yeah, going to get some supplies. And, and I just kind of went in because uh, when my wife is out of town, I'm going to Costco and I'm getting some stuff. And I got to tell you, it's not toilet paper and it's not water. This is what I got. Yeah, I got a TV. I'm sure your life has been turned upside down right now. And in our house, we have four people working from home. And I gotta tell you, it's not easy working at home. I'm really getting on my wife's nerves, as you can imagine. Uh, for some of you, it might be easy working from home. For others, not so much. No matter what your situation, 
we all have to make decisions. Whether we are going to respond by following the ways of the world or whether we are going to respond as followers of Jesus and love our family and neighbors. This week, uh, my wife got an email from one of our Chinese neighbors on our block and they sent this email to everybody on our street and it said, Dear neighbors, recently my family sent me some masks to protect ourselves from the coronavirus. I have put out some masks on our garage door for the neighbors. They can be useful to protect yourselves and others, especially when you go grocery shopping. Feel free to take some if you need. Stay healthy. And then they signed their names. And here are the masks that they put out in little Ziploc bags for all the neighbors to take. And as my wife uh, brought the masks home and was telling me about the email, I couldn't help but think what our Chinese neighbors must be feeling and what they must be going through. There's a lot of craziness going on in our world right now. And I want to let all of you know, you can make it better. It's your time to shine. In the Gospel of Matthew, it says this, You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under the bushel basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. As we come into Holy Week, I want to encourage all of you to be faithful and to love your family and your neighbors. See you soon. Now it's time to give offering. There are many ways that you can give, even when you're at home. If you like to give online, we describe many different ways that you could give on our website. So go there and check it out. Or you can send in a check via mail. That's always good too. Or as a family, you could get a jar and give an offering each week. And later on when we get together, uh, you can bring the jar and give an offering as a family. I just want to let you know that it really is your faithfulness that makes this ministry possible and it makes it possible for us to continue the support of all the missionaries that we are connected with. So on behalf of SCC, thanks.
Hill Community Church please receive this blessing. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.